What's happening guys? Coming at you again with another episode of Frequently Asked Questions with JP. So in this video we're going to be going over the question, why do I keep blowing fuses? Why do I keep uh, melting my fuse blocks? What's causing this? So we're going to go over that but first before we get into that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me so uh, you can know when we're dropping new content, especially hitting that little bell so you uh, turn on notifications. So you'll be here and uh, be able to know these videos that we're dropping and getting this good content out there for the information like we're about to drop right here. So anyway, in this video we're going to go over uh, different fuse. So we have different fuses, fuse holders, uh, and the light here and we're going to go over what happens with uh, fuse holders. Um, when you have one of them and it starts getting too hot and melting. So usually what is causing that is you're pulling too much current through uh, one that is too small. So usually if you were pulling too much current through it, you would pop the fuse. This is a mini ANL setup. So this is a mini ANL fuse. This is a normal ANL fuse. So you can see there's a lot more beef that comes with the uh, regular size ANL but we're gonna go over the smaller one first. So this is a little 30 amp fuse right here. So you wouldn't wanna put more than say uh, a 300 watt amp on this or three to 500 watts and which would be okay with this mini ANL setup. I think you can get these up to 80, maybe 100 amps, but that would be pushing it. So this fuse holder will be able to accept uh, eight gauge or four gauge wire. There's an adapter in there that will shrink it down for 8 gauge or you can use it for 4 gauge as well. So you don't want to pull too much power through here. Uh, if you are pulling too much power through here and you have uh, too big of a fuse, it's going to be surpassing what this fuse block can, uh, block can handle. So that's when it's going to start heating up and that's when it's going to start deforming. There's another question that somebody had. Um, I've had um, I've had my system in my vehicle for a while and it was working fine or the fuse holder was working fine for a while but uh, after six months or a year or something like that uh, the fuse burnout or the fuse um, holder got deformed and melted so what can cause that is uh, the connection getting loose if a connection gets loose on a um, an electrical connection gets loose in your car audio not just car audio but we're talking about car audio so if it gets loose that's gonna start generating heat right there. So that can cause, that's one of the biggest cause, causes of you melting a fuse block after it's been in and installed for a while is your, um, you'll get a loose connection, like one of your screws will back out just a tad and you'll get that loose connection. You'll start building up a lot of heat right there and that's what'll cause it to melt. Or you could get corrosion to start in there and that again makes a bad connection and it starts building up a ton of heat. So one thing is trying to pull too much power through too small of a fuse block um, or having a bad connection, whether it's corrosion or having a loose connection, your uh, screw coming loose. So you wanna make sure you have the proper size fuse holder for like what you're trying to run. So we're gonna use the Down for Sound JP23 as an example right here. I would recommend having a 250 or a 300 amp fuse to power the JP23. Obviously it has a zero gauge input right here so why on God's green earth would you want to use this fuse holder to power this? You'd be surprised how many people will want to power this amplifier with a four gauge input or four gauge power wire and they'll try to use this and they'll wonder why they're melting their power wire or their fuse block or both because there's a reason why this has a zero gauge. You don't put an eight gauge or a four gauge to try to power this with. It doesn't make sense. So don't do that. So you want to use a zero gauge fuse block, which you can run four gauge to this, or you can take that little uh, metal insert in there out and you could run zero gauge. So I usually recommend for these fuse holders up to 350 amps or so, uh, which will be safe on these type of fuse blocks. They're more budget friendly. They're cheaper for a reason. They'll get you by on up to 350 um, amps of uh, fusing. So this is a, SMD 150 amp fuse, which you could use uh, for 1500 watts or so, should be fine. But for this, again, this amplifier, you'd want to have about uh, 250 amp or 300 amp fuse in here to deal with an amplifier that's going to be pulling power like this one is. If you're going to be running a big amplifier, especially say something like um, the AAB 4900 
which is a 5k or a bigger amp that has single inputs you definitely want to have a heavy duty fuse block like the smd let's see turn it over product placement bro shout out to steve mead y'all tag him in this video so we can blow up his feed and he knows we're uh bragging on his products smd has great products there this is one of their heavy duty blocks obviously you can see the difference this thick see how thick this is made out of a lot better plastic as well made in the usa uh just better overall i mean that's but it's going to cost maybe two or three times as much but you get what you pay for right you want to run a big amplifier through a single run we even have fuses through smd for up to 600 amps of current here let's see if i can make this tiny bit bigger. 600 amps of current you'll want to use definitely use a heavy duty fuse block because it's going to be able to withstand the current that's going to be passing through there and and not melt like this way. You try to run 600 amps of current through this bad boy, you're gonna have some heat issues. You're gonna be melting it down. Well, if you're melting it down, that's letting you know that you're surpassing the output or the abilities of this particular product you need to upgrade. I was just dealing with a customer the other day. He said that he was having issues with uh, melting his power wire. He continued was melting it and I'm like, what's going on with it? And again, he was running, actually, he was running a JP23 with four gauge power wire. I'm like, one in my head, I'm like, why are you doing that? And I actually said that, why are you doing that? It has zero gauge inputs for a reason. You're gonna either blow up the amp or melt your power wire. He's like, well, I'm already melting my power wire wood. I'm like, okay, well, there you go. That's why you're melting it. So how do, how do we fix this? So I told him, get you a down for sound, zero gauge amplifier, OFC amplifier install kit, and you should be golden. And he did just that. He purchased the amplifier install kit, installed it, zero issues. He, and he says the amplifier is performing better. It's not getting as hot, just overall better. Anyway, I hope this information has found you well and helps you out a lot. If you're an installer or you found tricks of the trade in um, melting fuses or fuse blocks or anything like that, or what's maybe caused it for you that I didn't go over, post it in the comments below and let us know what you found uh, that have caused that. But uh, these are the things, the top three things that I have found personally that cause these issues. So anyway, I hope this information has found you well and uh, we will see you in the next video. Later. Yo, what's up guys? If you want to see more of the hot content that you just saw in that video, be sure to follow me on all my social media channels from YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, The Life of Price is my handle on there. Also have Down for Sound Shop on Facebook and Instagram and don't forget Snapchat is JPD4S. Check out all the hot content on there as well.